Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. And, and Rama says sniff, sniff. He does. He's and always got to be in the middle. And Sita says blink, blink. And and really, Miss Sass is just chewing on a bone. So, guys, we want to thank everybody supporting us over on Ko-Fi and Patreon. We couldn't keep it going without you guys in this... Well, this world of demonization, please make sure you subscribe both channels. Anything ever happens, we are also on Brightian, Rumble, and BitChute. So, let us see what's going on over here. You know, the Canary Islands are interesting. Again, we have La Palma over there, which is this submerged... Well, it, it, it's just a ticking time bomb waiting to kind of go off, according to some of the experts. And here we have a roar like an explosion, vibrating windows, and calls to 112. I guess that's our local emergency. This is how the impact of a supersonic speed car was experienced in Gran Canaria. Supersonic speed car. Okay, well, maybe that's partly translation. Um, but one thing it is buzzing is everybody that was in that area says they heard something and it sounded like a big boom and you know gets people wondering what was it was it a meteor and some people said yeah you know a meteor a meteor just crashed in the canary islands big explosion heard several dozens of miles around experts believe that the big roar felt in gran canaria could have been caused by a meteorite by the way this is probably most definitely uh, some of the leftover Atlantean uh, ruins and, and, you know, absolutely amazingly gorgeous area. Impact of an object of natural <laughs> or maybe of artificial origin. Well, that should cover about everything. At supersonic speed as the cause of the noise that has shaken Gran Canaria, Spain, Wednesday afternoon, another unusual event in less than a week in Europe. And looking at the USGS, what do I see? Well, you know, we have this one, which is, you know, probably several thousand miles away over on the Rajankis Ridge, 5.5. We have this one uh, inside the Straits of Gibraltar, 4.4. Uh, I would think unrelated because when we're talking about the Canaries again, we're talking quite a bit away from those two. Um, we do have a little action over on the West Coast, as usual, fracking quakes in Texas, one over by the New Madrid. But this is the one that really gets me curious, because these are in off the plate. And do they frack in Canada? I don't know. Um, but I don't know. I didn't even point this out to Cindy at all. There's six of them here. 5.3, 4.6, 4.9, 4.5, 4.3, 4.0. Do you get any vibes on that? Uh, just that it, it feels underground and it also feels um, ar artificial. Well, they're all listed pretty much right around standard 10 kilometer depth, which gives you a standard shallow quake. But that's so far in off the plates. It, and six of them, that really feels weird to me as does what, what's going on over in the Canary Islands. So I was taking a look at heliplots just to see, and nothing really there, nothing like when we saw that 7.0 that probably was a full magnitude higher because that gave us lots of blackouts. When we uh, look on through some of these areas, there's really nothing that's that's striking me. And over here, we see somebody that was saying, I wonder if this had anything to do with what happened in Tonga. Mm. Now, oh, that will get me very curious and very interested because, you know, Tonga is definitely making things colder in the Southern Hemisphere. David was just talking about that today at DAP 2030. And, you know, we were just talking to another family member who has an amazing place in Idaho, gorgeous, gorgeous homestead. You, you know, so put together, greenhouses and everything, beautiful family, lovely people. 
And he was just saying, I don't know, you know, is, is it going to get too cold up here? W- will it? You know, that's one of the things we're wondering. How cold is it going to get? And, you know, what's what's it going to look like? And, you know, not that I'm, and hopefully I'm not jumping too far all over the place for you guys, just that there's so many things that are inter- interconnected. You see here, mega weapon. We know about the hypersonic missiles. We know that it's a it's it's a released fact that they have what they would call tsunami bombs. In fact, the U.S. was before they decided to go ahead with um, what happened in Nagasaki and Hiroshima. They were thinking about doing tsunami bombs, the U.S. on Japan to get Japan to quit in World War II. That was you know the other option besides developing everything that was developed with uh, Oppenheimer's work. Tsunami bombs are a reality, and Russia's talked about it, that they could do it, and that they could create massive tsunamis. And this really, honestly, this is why I'm harping on it, is because I do feel that when the war, you know, WW3 starts, it's likely to start with something that looks like it might be natural and cause a lot of confusion and cause a lot of damage. You know what just um, reminded me last week, and I woke up to the words Project Dorsal Fin, and and I've never heard that. I don't know where it came from. It was, in a way, it felt kind of weird because I usually don't get names. I get a lot of pictures. I get a lot of information, but yeah, but I don't get names, and that was really clear. So if anyone has heard of that. Yeah, and that's weird. See, that's where Cindy and I balance each other and stuff because I will get random names like out of the blue or things like that. Uh, it's like somebody just whispers in my ear or something. And there is a difference, too, when those whisperings are put in by the dark side and when they're not. And when you have something that's a technology that humans are doing, it feels completely different than something that comes from a guide that is a fifth density, sixth density being. Totally, night and day. It's just like, you know, you could relate it to anything. You, it's, 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 it's like, you know, technology that people do, maybe at the alphabet soups, you know, that are all over the world, different countries, they all have their alphabet soups. That's like going to McDonald's. And, you know, <laughs> like taking one of the top chefs in the world, sitting them down and giving him McDonald's and then giving them something from, you know, a real high quality, one of the best restaurants in the world. I think you could tell the difference. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Yeah, totally, totally. And, you know, again, the controllers, you know, they're they're McDonald's guys. <laughs> they are, you know, they're McDonald's guys. Yes, they are. They don't have any sense of class. They have no sense of taste. They have no sense of style as much as they try. No, and they they can keep trying. Yes. But, you know, here we see depictions of, you know, Tonga, eruption, missile, mega weapon. Is this something else like that? And then we see this, the explosion that c- occurred this afternoon is due, according to our sources, to the sonic impact of an airplane crossing the sound of, ba- of a barrier. So just just a sonic boom, that's what they're saying. Hmm, who, who's? Who's military, I wonder? Because other sources are saying it was a meteorite. Yeah, it, it was a meteorite. So it, this seems almost intentionally confused or that there is something really big here that they really don't want people to know about and so they're just eagerly covering their tracks put out the official story is this quick 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 but but okay but by the way we already put out the official story was that (laughs) and and you know another thing they'll do a lot of the time is they'll shield the information because they know that there's people out there who can pick up what went on and the very first time I went to look I that had happened this this information had been shielded so I let it go and and I waited an hour and Mike asked me again and I I went back in there and you know I got information about a ship a ship that had been harmed and the only thing I can say is it was it was our adversaries it was part of their ship and that's all that's come in so far 
Yeah. So, you know, again, this that's interesting because this, this war, again, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Well, yeah, we do. We do wrestle against flesh and blood, and we wrestle against things that are other density as well. This war extends through 3D, 4D, 5D, up into lower uh, echelons of 5D. There was a comment from somebody of the Islamic faith uh, saying that this is all jinn and there's not really any any physical beings behind it or something to the like of that effect. And I think, again, this is where we get distorted if we're only looking at it from the Abrahamic point of view. And Islam, uh, Christianity, and Judaism come out of that Abrahamic point of view. Uh, no, there there are physical beings. There are There are 3D beings that can travel here in ships. There are also 4D, and there's also 5D, and uh, there's beings that travel in, in light bodies and come here. So, you know, again, there's all of the above. It's not that there's no physical extraterrestrials. Yes, you know, there are beings that can be as solid as you or I that can, you know, come and go. And there are those that are just a little bit outside of our vibrational frequency. And then there are those that are quite a bit above that can also lower themselves. So they can appear uh, visible. But when you're talking like the 5D beings and all, they're going to appear just more as light themselves. They're, they're going to be light with kind of a, a form to it per se, but, but not solid. But just because, you know, these beings that we might call the jinn, uh, or, you know, we could call them many other things, uh, are not, some of them are not of this density. There are others that are. So, yeah, absolutely. This extends through all different densities. And we've had encounters with beings that were very uh, dense, <laughs> so to speak. Yeah, we, we've encountered a bunch. And so when, when we share this with you guys, we're sharing it with you from the perspective of, uh, not just conjecture, not reading somebody else's material, but firsthand experience. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and I'll never forget that story we did in Mississippi where we were videotaping that that thing. And oh, my gosh, it did. It came out as a, a being of flame. And while we were talking, you couldn't see it. You couldn't see it with your two eyes. It wasn't until... Um, we, we played the videos, someone came back and said, who, what is that thing? And I mean, the story behind it was so awful because there was 10 goats across the, the lake and all 10 of those goats had been slaughtered like an hour after we did that video. And that was probably the most morbid thing I've really Oh, well, there was one other one, but that one is the one that gives me the chills because that's how close it was to us. And if you're looking at the screen now, you can see that thing and you can actually see the animals looking at it. Um, it was just, it gives, it gives me shivers. I mean, to know it was that close, you know, is bothersome. But, you know, again, I, I've woke up and I was sabotaged by a gray alien that was somewhere between eight and nine feet tall. This was a tall gray uh, that thought I wasn't going to wake up, but I woke up, I saw it. It was 3D. It was 3D. And then it looked away from me immediately, straightened up partially because it was actually taller than the ceiling. And, and then it just went into a meditative state and it started to disappear before my very eyes but i was able to watch it for over a minute and you know i i, I just stared at it. i got a good good look at it its uh, forearm was the length of my entire arm including my my fingers pointing outwards so you know i would say its forearm was probably 30 inches or so you know it was really a long forearm it had three fingers three long fingers uh angular face very much like some of the depictions there um i didn't feel that demonic vibe because i've encountered many demons as well and and things that i would say are purely demon this is this is not a nice thing. Absolutely not. There, it doesn't have a high vibe, high frequency. It wasn't giving off any emotions. It was absolutely sterile. It almost felt very clinical, like a clinician that could care less uh, what it was doing. It was just doing what it had to do, 
which basically was sabotaging my lower dantian so I could get sick. Uh, it was literally try it was puncturing a hole in my uh, energy body. And, you know, which I did re recover from, from the Qigong that I know how to do and draw on the life force plus all the help from the guides. But so that was totally physical, 3D, and then went back to its normal state of being in the lower fourth density. Um, but myself, my kids, I know Cindy's had encounters with the little greys. We've had encounters with something very, very chupacabra-ish. We've had encounters with Bigfoot-ish things. Uh, we've had Draco go by on patrol not far from us. Um, yeah, and then all sorts of interesting different uh, alien beings of more or less, you know, they're not, there's a lot of them out there that are not malevolent, they're not benevolent, they're just kind of indifferent but curious. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, I mean... It, it all, every experience is a little bit different. This one really bothered me too because the police actually came and knocked on our door because the, the goats had been slaughtered and they were going to blame it on poor Zeke. And, and he's he's so gentle, you know, Sassy was his best friend and there's an, he would never hurt anything, but it really turned. And he was on a, he was on a leash and, you know, we were at, in a trailer. Yeah. At, at a RV park and ours was right next to the fence where these animals were fenced in on the other side of the fence and so they were coming by us they were intrigued but a lot of uh, animals do get intrigued you know we could feel sense the vibe that we love we love animals and you know so they were coming by us but then they they were slaughtered over towards the house so they were slaughtered on the other side um, uh, of the pond but we digress but the point is that you know again we're, we're sharing due to direct experience and so if I had to venture to guess you know at least a dozen different interdimensional extraterrestrial species as well as things that are just black blobs like they are black holes with glowing red eyes now those things I would say are classic demons classic demonic you know demons those things or you could say they're kind of wraith-like, um, but they, they go away really quick. They're just a thought form. So, you know, simply sending light out towards it, they'll, they'll go scatter, they'll go running away. Um, they're, they're really nothing uh, that you have to worry about unless you allow them to uh, get control of you because these things will get control of you if we, you know, go ahead and we, you know, drink too much alcohol. And if we utilize the FARMA industry, every time you you put something in from that industry into your body, you're just opening a dark doorway. People will say, you know, oh, I don't want to have my chakras opened, you know, and it, why? You know, because when, when you're closed off from your higher self, then you're, you're just, you know, you're, you're walking meal. Yeah, you, you know, exactly. You're, you're a puppet waiting to be puppeted uh, or a meal waiting to happen as so many of these things just feed off of our fear, our hatred. Every, every negative emotion is just another dish at a banquet to them. Mm -hmm. It's a crazy world out there and you're not going to hear any of this in any type of indoctrination school. <laughs> but we're here to tell you it's, it's real and it's there. Yeah, absolutely. And um, here we have a meteor fireball reported over Belgium, France, Germany, and the UK. This was on the 24th. And this is another one. This one went by. Uh, this is the uh, Sky Needle up in Toronto. Beautiful. And this, this does feel more like a ship to me or a being. It does. It does. It has more of a personality to it. Yeah, you can see a still there. And this, this was a small asteroid discovered only hours earlier, disintegrates over Canada. And again, you know, the official stories, again, those, those are a lot of times that's just damage control. Damage control. But the thing is, is there are there things impacting? As you see this quote, another imminent impactor has been spotted. Small, less than a meter, they say. Hmm, very interesting. And when you're, when you're looking at things... Feel into it and feel for a personality, and that's how you start building that discernment. And this is another angle of that same one over Canada. And over here, we see 
this we had saw and we had you know drawn questions of what really was that because this this is right here over manhattan this was seen up in massachusetts this was seen all over connecticut this traveled a really long way and they say it's an antares rocket that shot over manhattan visible over the entire east coast it could be, it could be, it could be, yeah, you know, sure. And and it could be that there was a rocket launched and it could be that there's other things watching the rocket. You know, again, there's a lot going on that doesn't always meet the eye. So did a huge fireball hit this North California home? Big Bang meteor over California, two other states on the 5th. And one did destroy a house something did something destroyed the house we had talked about this earlier there's been a lot of these lately meteor and grotten mass as you can see here or something anyway you know sure some of them could be this is in scotland And then this hit me like it could be cgi so i wasn't even going to share it but i'm just going to share it in case you know, just just for just for fun. Here you go. It's fun. You know what? That not that coming in, but that blast reminds me of uh, Lebanon. And I, I gotta wonder, did somebody splice this into the Lebanon video? Remember that big thing, that big blast that they said was just stuff stored in the building that I don't really buy. This is in Russia. Looks like a DNA spiral, is it not? That, that's really pretty cool. And this is just really cool time lapse showing the rotation of the Earth. Boy, it's gorgeous out there, is it not? That is just, you know, that's heavenly. When you, when you go outside, if you're able to see the stars, if there's not a lot of light pollution, you'll notice a vibe, an intensity that's different than the sun. So those stars, when we're looking up at them, believe me, they're they're transferring their information to you too. So soak that night sky up. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, some people seem to see all sorts of unexplained aerial phenomenon. Uh, others never see anything. Uh, again, a lot of it could be where where are you? I mean, if you're if you're living in you know, New York City, L.A., Paris, Tokyo, you're not going to see crap much, you know, not much of the time. you got to get outside of those, those, all those lights that are just dimming it. When we were, especially in Nevada and New Mexico, holy cow, just mind-blowing. When you step out there and there's nobody else around for, for miles upon miles upon miles, and it's just the stars seem to come up from the ground, they seem to come up from the ground, and they seem to be almost like right there. It was a rare night when we didn't see something that couldn't be easily explained. Mm -hmm. It's it's true. I mean, without the light pollution there, it's you you don't really go out and not see anything. Not even for one night. There's always something. You know, the other thing too that I was thinking about because like we don't really get the same sorts of visits um here that than we have gotten in the past when we were even more isolated when we had no neighbors you know and things like that when ships could be going overhead and saying wow you know that's an interesting light i wonder what type of person that is and then you know you get these visitations because really again beings out, outside of our spectrum and being in the kali yuga and having ourselves intentionally being dumbed down by the powers that be with calcified pineal glands and all it's just a matter of reaching out and thinking about a being then that, that you could communicate with them telepath telepath uh, telepathic communication is the norm so they could be literally flying overhead and think down at you because they would read your energetic signature and they can make contact just like that I, and they do seem to recognize people who have that, that channeling ability. Yeah, absolutely. So as always, guys, look forward to your comments. Much love. God bless and namaste. Namaste.